So enter on line 11 the total value of gifts you made in cash or check, including out-of-pocket expenses unless a limit on deduction gifts applies to you. So we talked a little bit about some of the limits in a prior presentation, remembering that if you're looking at lower income taxpayers, the problem is they might not be able to get a benefit from giving to charity because they're not itemizing. Higher income taxpayers usually are not going to hit the limit of in terms of how much they can put into a charitable contribution because it's fairly high, but it's possible that they put more money in than they're allowed to put in given the limitations which will be based on their income or more specifically typically their adjusted gross income which will be helpful to determine using tax software typically so for uh, more information about the limits on de deducting gifts see limit on the amount you can deduct which we looked at earlier if your deduction is limited you may have a carryover to next year so again the limitation not quite common but could happen for higher income individuals depending on what they are doing then the question is do you lose the deduction entirely or do we get to carry it back or carry it forward Typically with the charitable contributions, you might be able to carry it forward. For more information on that, you can see publication 526 for more information. So deduction for gifts by cash or check limited. If your deduction for gifts you made in cash or, or by check is limited, see publication 526 to figure the amount you can deduct. Only enter on line 11 the deductible value of gifts you made in cash or by check on the actual schedule a record keeping for any contribution made uh, in cash regardless of the amount you must maintain as a record of the contribution a bank record such as a canceled check or credit card statement or a written record from the charity now when we think about the audit trail the audit trail is really important if we have a legitimate type of deduction. Notice there's multiple kind of concerns with different kinds of payments and how much intervention the government has in individuals' businesses, meaning usually Americans might not like the government tracking all of the things that they are paying for and whatnot. And cash is typically king in that you can spend cash on things and you don't have that kind of audit trail that you typically do have when you have like a credit card transactions or electronic transactions however if you have a deductible item if it was like a business expense or if it was something that you expect to deduct on the schedule a you of course want the audit trail not because you have to report it at least not at this time when you do your taxes on the tax return on the 1040 but in the event of an audit then they're going to want to see that kind of auditor you can't just say well I, I i paid it out i got some money out of the acm and then i paid it to somebody or it took the money out of from underneath my mattress and then i just kind of paid it no you want to have the audit trail so that you can verify uh the payment so the written record must include the name of the charity date and amount of the contribution if you made contributions through payroll deduction see publication 526 for information on records you must keep don't attach the record to your tax return instead keep it with your other tax records so this is one of those items where the irs does not have like a 1099 or a 1098 telling them how much money you gave to charity it's something that you still have the, the capacity to voluntarily report, which is supposed to be our whole tax system, a voluntarily reporting system where they verify with audits in a similar way as if you're driving on the freeway, there's a speed limit. You're not going to get caught all the time if you're speeding, but sometimes the, the officer might, you might get caught sometimes, right? And the way to apply that same kind of philosophy on taxes is to have some format of random audits right so they can check people and see if they're in compliance and if not have the penalties high enough that it will dissuade you from cheating basically in the future so for contributions of 250 dollars or more you must also have a contemporaneous written acknowledgement from the charitable organization so if you're going over that 250 dollar 250 dollar limitation you all also want the documentation from uh, the charity not just basically your 
uh, your written records and hopefully an electronic transfer or a canceled check or something like that. Most charitable organizations will flaunt the fact that they're charitable organizations because that's how they make money. And hopefully they will be good at reporting to you any gifts over the 250. So you can see gifts of 250 or more earlier for more information, which we discussed. You will still need to keep a record of when you made the cash contribution if the contemporaneous written acknowledgement doesn't include that information. Line number 12, other than by cash or check. 